Hello guys and welcome back to Persona 3 Reload. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we were about to go to Tartarus, but unfortunately Sonata-san is off on his own journey doing stuff. So we can't go to Tartarus with him at the moment. So we're slowly approaching the deadline. Hopefully Sonata will show up at some point within the next 11 days, because I do want to uh, XP grind him because we're going to be using him on the next full moon operation. Uh, anyways, I've been debating, do I want to hang out with Yukari here, or should I level up my stuff? Gosh, so we're on rank 6 Courage. Okay. I'm going to hold off on ranking up Charm a little bit, at least, at least until we get to July. So... Instead of just doing the same old boring routine that we've done every night for the past 30-something episodes, we're going to actually hang out with Takaba. Or Yukari, I should say. I got enthusiastic about cooking for myself once, but I bought way too many ingredients. I'm going to have a lot of leftovers on my hands. Looks like Yukari wants me to cook with her. Should I spend the evening with Yukari? Yuki-kun, will you help me out? Sure, I'll help. Thanks. Awesome, let's go make something tasty. I picked up the ingredients to make chicken saute today, but I might have bought too much. I think my eyes are bigger than my stomach. I always end up having leftovers. What about you? Would you say you're a big eater? Uh, I eat like a pig. Oh, sounds like a healthy appetite. You're in luck because we've got plenty. I hope it tastes all right, but don't get your hopes too high, okay? I haven't been cooking much lately. Well, either way, it'll be packed full of nutrients, so don't worry about that. They say your health is your most valuable asset, you know? I figured we should think about what we're putting into our bodies. And if I could lose some weight while we're at it, I'd kill two birds with one stone. But let's put that aside for now. Anyway, why don't we start with veggies? Can you cut the tomatoes for me? God, when, when she said my eyes are bigger than my stomach, I started imagining, like, horror monsters where, like, they have ginormous eyes or, like, an incredibly sp small, like, stomach or something like that. I don't know. I made chicken saute with Yukari. Uh, I chose breast meat because it was cheap and I heard it's good for a diet, but it's kind of dry. Okay, very dry. I can barely chew through it. And that was unexpected. I don't usually mess up this kind of thing. Hey, you're doubting me, aren't you? I'm serious. I'll make up for it next time, so let's cook together again when you get the chance. It'll be so delicious, you can't help saying yum. One thing that is kind of fun about doing this Let's Play is each episode feels kind of episodic in a way. Where, unless we're doing like major plot stuff, you could usually like jump in on any episode and you could usually get a feel for the characters and, you know, what everyone's personality is and get to see fun hijinks. Not that I'm suggesting you just like jump around to random episodes, especially if this is your first time experiencing this game. You should definitely start from episode one and then go to two and three, etc. But yeah, that is one of the many charms of this game, is that it feels as it feels half the time like a an importance like RPG, you know, like story, like heavy kind of game. But then the other half is like fun, episodic adventures with your friends. Hey, did you hear about all those people who were found unconscious recently? Apparently a lot of them were couples. Excuse me? What, like they were attempting a, du a double suicide or something? I guess it's kind of romantic to sleep for eternity with your lover, like Romeo and Juliet. No way. No, uh no way, that's not romantic at all. Wonder if it's because of the full moon. So maybe that gives us some sort of hint as to what the theming for the next, um full moon is going to be. I mean, there is the Lover's Arcana, so it's not entirely impossible. Did you hear about the two people who were found unconscious? I bet fewer people will be cheating on their significant others from now on. After all, one of them was a man and the other a woman. Those are pretty incriminating circumstances, if you ask me. Well, nothing says they were cheating, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Yo, Yo what's up, Yuki? I'm feeling pretty good, man. Hey, promise me you'll do whatever you want, whenever you want, while we're still young, alright? I'll always have your back, dude. You hear about that couple they found together? Part of me is glad it wasn't me. And the other part is jealous, since I've never had a girlfriend. Really? I couldn't tell. Ooh, Fuka's available. And then there's also Yuko. 
Oof. Are they both available? They are. They're both available and Chihiro isn't. Let's see. I'm curious. What's Yuko's social link at? Seven. Alright, since we're getting pretty close to Yuko's uh, romance option, we're gonna go ahead and hang out with her. And we've got a strength persona on us, so... Let's celebrate. Good work today, coach. Let's have ourselves a little party to commemorate the occasion. And soon, I've got a place in mind, so let me know when you have some time. Oh, Yuki-kun, are you free today? I'm pretty much ready to throw that party, so I thought it might be a good time. No backing out now, okay? Hmm, where should we go? How about my place? Don't worry, I tidied up beforehand. Um, sorry that the party ended up being at my place. I was out buying stuff that might be useful for running practice, and I ran out of money. I'll go ahead and say this is a nice room. Oh, really? Good thing I took the time to tidy up. Feel free to eat as many snacks as you want, okay? It was a lot of hard work, but I'm glad we decided to coach those kids in the end. What do you think? <sighs> um, sorry. It's just, I never noticed how long your eyelashes are. I don't think I've looked at you this closely before. It's only the two of us here now. Maybe that's why I'm a little nervous. Uh, how about we change the subject? I'll ask you a question. Hmm. Oh, do you like children? I do. Really? Me too. I like how they're so pure and always try their best. It just makes me want to support them as much as I can. I realized recently how much I like to look after other people. Let's see, uh, okay, next question. Let's say you get married and have a kid. Would you want it to be a boy or a girl? I think the best option to say here is a girl. Me too! Oh, we must be on the same wavelength. I would dress her up in all kinds of different outfits. Oh, she could be my little helper. Either way, I would just hope that the baby didn't take after me. You could say I'm a little rough around the edges. But if they took after you, I'm sure they'd be super cute. They'd probably be athletic too. Wonder if they'll take an interest in sports. Yuko seems to be deep in thought. I feel like our relationship has grown. By the way, do you look more like your dad or your mom? I've been told that I'm the spitting image of my dad. It's not that I mind, but I do have mixed feelings about it. I mean, we don't look that much alike, right? My eyebrows aren't as bushy for one. I chatted with Yuko for a while and then returned to the dorm. Ooh, Sonata's, uh... Oh, okay, so that definitely means Sonata's available, right? And Mitsuru's here, so she's available. I think the stars have finally aligned. We don't have any linked episodes. Nothing's really going on at this point in the game. I'm gonna go ahead and talk to Yukari here, and then we're gonna have finally head to Tartarus. By the way, I heard that a lot of people joining the Lost lately are couples. I'll try not to assume what they were doing before, just before the dark hour. But anyways, it seems like the next shadow is starting to make its move, doesn't it? Well, they've only got 10 days left until the full moon, so it makes sense that we're starting to see a bit more activity. Hey. You know those couples who came down with apathy, apathy syndrome? It's a hot topic in my class, but I can't figure out why they've been attacking groups of two specifically. I just don't see the point. Is that all part of the shadow's plan? I hope we figure something out with our investigation. Anyway, let's keep our chins up. Um. Is everyone available? Uh -huh. Yes! Alright. This is probably the most excited I've ever been to go to Tartarus, but but we're getting close to the full moon and, you know, I've got some cool stuff to show off. What's going on here? We could always hang out with a monk, but I'm going to be going to Club Escapade for a different reason, because I want to see if the fortune teller has something new. Yes, change within you. Will allow me to provide you with a new fortune. Gamble fortune and soul fortune. I believe soul fortune is what we're after here. want to know my fortune. Yes, so, oh, it's 5,000, though. Yeah, we don't have any money for these fortunes, I guess next time, but Soul Fortune increases the rate at which the Theurgy attacks uh, start to charge up. I know it's probably been, like, close to a month since, um, at least in-game, since we've, we were introduced to Theurgy, but, yeah, we're actually gonna get to show it off for real this time. But yeah, next time for sure, 
if we have enough money, I'll be sure to show off the Theurgy fortune. I guess this will give us, like, a point of reference for when we actually get to use the fortune. Let's go to Tartarus. Yes. Alright then, let's meet up at the usual place. I'll let the others know. See you there. The card in my hand is reacting. Multiple Major Arcana cards have been added to Shuffle Time. So we got the Empress, Empress, which increases a couple of the stats of our Persona. Emperor, which does the same thing. So yeah, we actually have to go after missing people these time, this time. Uh, I sort of went into what it was before. So you go to Elizabeth, ask about missing persons. I can sense a presence. I sense someone. There seems to be a human presence within Tartarus between floor 48 and 53. It would be best for you to search the tower and locate them as soon as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and go over to the teleporter, teleport up to floor 47. Thanks, I assume it is. We have backup and don't forget what happened during the last full moon. We can't leave Yamagishi alone. I'll leave it up to you to decide on the party members. I know you can handle it. I'll do everything I can to help. Let's give it our best. Yes, indeedy. So now we can actually swap out our party members. She don't want to bring a full party? Uh, I forget. Now that we're, you know, just getting... Now that we have an actual full team here, you have to manually go into... Uh, what is it? Stats? And then press square on the people you want to bring along. And you can't bring more than three people with you, And because if you try to... It'll tell you you have one more party member than you need. I'm going to be bringing Yukari, Sonata, and Mitsuru. Of course, we always have to bring Makoto and Fuka because, you know, they're vital to our operation here. But the other three members you get to choose completely on your own. The way that I always do stuff in Persona is that I just go with whichever three team members are the most recent. Ah, okay, so the missing people are in the next block up. Or not next block, but uh, beyond the border floor, I should say. Later, do you have a moment? I'd like to share something I found out about using Theurgy. Theurgy can't be used just at any time. The user has to reach an emotional peak first. In other words, Theurgy can only be used after enough power is built up. Also, how someone builds up this power is different depending on the person. For Kirito-senpai, it's when she inflicts status ailments on an enemy, but for Yukari-chan, it's when she heals someone. Try out different things and see what works for different teammates. Theurgy is very powerful. We'll definitely want to use it as much as we can. So yeah, it's basically saying, and I'll show this off um, later, Send someone on a higher floor. Okay, you have to do different stuff to get people's theurgy gauges up. So it's not just like attacking or something like that. Remember not to push yourself too hard. It's not something that just progresses as time goes on. You have to actively make an effort to increase your gauge. Back at the border floor, same thing as before happens. The animation for that is very cool. Looks like the shaking has subsided. Is everyone all right? The path towards the staircase has opened up. You can advance further now. We don't know what's waiting ahead, so please be careful going forward. It's all thanks to you that we've made it this far. So yeah, unfortunately it's not a new block past every border floor, because then they'd have to come up with, like, ten whole environments. Uh, remember how helpless I felt being here alone? So yeah, it's just Tartarus as normal, except occasionally the game will tell us, hey, holy crap, we have 41 Twilight Fragments. Yeah, the game will occasionally say, hey, go be sure to save someone, and we go do that. Let me see if I can get up the theurgy gauges so I can show that off. This game has an incredible sense of style, um, which it has sort of uh, gained from its predecessors. One thing that I... one criticism that I really don't understand... oh hey, slime. One criticism that I really don't understand about this game is some people say it's too much like Persona 5 and it doesn't really have its own identity. And that doesn't really make sense to me as a criticism just because they're part of the same series. They're The reason that Persona 3 didn't have like this insane sense of style is because it was made on the PS2 in 2006. And of course now that their most recent mainline game had 
an absolutely gorgeous sense of style that everyone loves. Of course, that's like the style that they want to go with for the series. And it's not like the original Persona 3, the original Persona 3 and as well as Persona 4 didn't have this uh, sort of cool sense of style. Ouch. They still had their bits and pieces there, but again, because their characters looked like this, um, you can tell what kind of technology was in use at the time. One thing that I haven't really brought up, and I probably should have at least once, is the methods behind Persona summoning, because that's probably one of the most, like, first of all, well-known, but second of all, the, one of the craziest things about this game is the fact that in this game and this game alone, you have to, like, almost shoot yourself in the head to summon your Persona. Because this isn't a thing that was in uh, Personas 1 or 2, and it hasn't been a thing since Persona 3. Each game sort of has its own method of summoning Personas that sort of ties into the themes of the game. For example, you know, Persona 3 has that mid-2000s, like, edginess to it. But yeah, look at the protagonist. Just like the epitome of, like, you think emo and you think of this guy. And then Persona 4, it's a bit less clear to me, I should probably, probably should have done a bit more research, but um, you like grab a card out of like thin air, and it's like, I guess like you're reaching out for the truth when you're grabbing the card, and since, you know, the Persona games have to do with the uh, 12 major arcanas, it makes sense that they deal with cards. Persona 5, they like grab their masks, because they all wear masks in that, in that game. And it's a bit more like theater-like, a bit more showy, which makes sense for some of the stuff that happens in that game. And then Persona 1 and 2 just have their basic, like, you just yell Persona because, you know, it's the very beginning of the series. They didn't really have any, like, major crazy ideas for what summoning a Persona was supposed to be like. Unigimitama. Nice. I think th I used this persona a good bit. Pretty well. I mean, it's a very memorable looking persona. I mean, just look at it. Got temperance, which means we can hang out with Bebe later if we want to. Uh, ooh, Media, Garu, and Baisuri. So yeah, those are some pretty good moves. One thing that I like to do with um, my Let's Plays is I try to take... I try to look at my let my previous Let's Play Think about, like, a major criticism I can have about it, and try to make that better for the next LP. For example, in my 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors Let's Play, there were a lot of, like, weird mouth noises that got into the audio recording, so I tried to figure- I'm trying to figure out ways to fix that, and mostly it's working because I don't really notice them in the- whenever I'm editing anymore. My main solution to that is just staying hydrated. And then in my DDLC LP, which is a very funny thing to say because it's just six letters in a row, but in there, uh, there was a bit of an issue with, like, flickering with the text boxes that I needed to fix. And also, I looked back in editing and I said the words um and uh a whole lot, so I'm trying to tone that down. And then in my Justice For All LP, I realized that, um, and comments had pointed out that a lot of it was just me... It was mostly just me... reading out the dialogue, and not really adding too much to it, and so it kind of got, uh, boring... when you're watching the whole thing through. And so I'm trying to add a bit more of myself into this LP. It was a bit harder to do that with Justice For All, because... because it's a visual novel, and so a lot of it is just reading and very little gameplay, quote-unquote. So yeah, and there's a lot of stuff in... There is some stuff in this LP that I do want to... that I do want to continue to improve on. We're getting a lot of new Personas here. But yeah, improvement is always just something that I'll have to strive for, because... I'll never be, like, the best at making videos ever. That's an impossible standard to set. So I'll just see what I can improve and improve on it improve on it in the future. And that's why I do eventually want to go back and redo a bunch of my old LPs, because I do notice quite a few things where I'm like, oh, I wish I had done this better and this better and this better. Um, and I've mentioned this all in the past before. 
So yeah, of course I'm going to wait a while before I start redoing LPs, but it will happen eventually. There's a powerful enemy up ahead. Please be careful if you plan to... I forgot to read that. You'll be going up against another gatekeeper. It won't be an easy fight. You can do this, though. I'll do my best to support you from here. With my full analysis, I'll be able to give you a complete breakdown of enemy weaknesses on the spot. And remember that I can use Theurgy as well. Hopefully it'll come in handy. Well, this is it. Stay safe and good luck, team. I'm here if you need me. So yeah, Fuka has her own Theurgy, which uh, is taken from a gameplay element from the original Persona 3, where you could call in Fuka and be like, hey, could you help us out? She would give you either random stat increase or decrease, or maybe help out with your health. And it was always a gamble, because sometimes she would really help you out in time of need, or sometimes she would absolutely screw you over by accidentally downing your defense and stuff like that. One uh, strategy that I used in my personal pay playthrough that I'll go ahead and show off here is that is I would max out everyone's Theurgy gauge there and then go into the boss fight and just spam Theurgy stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and show off that strategy here. So while I'm ranking up the Theurgy gauges, I've been thinking about, because of course there have been rumors for quite a bit now that remakes for a bunch of previous Persona games will be coming out, um, you know, a remake of Persona 4, and either remaster or remake of Personas 1 and 2. I've been very curious about what a Persona 1 and 2 remake would look like, because with Persona... with Persona 3, a lot of the... like, Tartarus was completely overhauled, but all of the other, like, overworld elements look pretty much the same as the original game, just, you know, brought to the modern day. And you can't really do that with Personas 1 and 2 because those games were 2D. I mean, yeah, they look like they're 3D, but they're... But it's all sprites moving against each other. So, I'd be very interested to see how they bring that to the modern day because... With... Because with remaking stuff and trying to be as faithful as possible, there's a chance that it'll always feel like... For some areas in this game, you could tell that... You know, it was originally a PS2 game because... There are, there are areas that are a bit too open, I guess. Like, a bit too wide. And it feels like, it like since this game is going for a bit more, like, realistic looking, uh, right, we... it can kind of look weird at points. I don't know if what I'm saying is getting across. But my point is, if they were to fully, like, remake Persona 1 and 2 from the ground up, it'd look very... It would have quite a huge difference from the original versions, and that'd be very interesting to see. I noticed there are quite a few complaints about us getting all of these remakes because... because, you know, everyone's like, we just want the next Persona game, where's Persona 6? And I, I sort of get that, but, you know, we're at a point in gaming right now where... and we, I might say that, and I might say this and I look back on... and I'll look back on it years later and I'll be like, wow, that, that was so, like, that's such an outdated statement, but... I feel like we're kind of at the peak of, like, I feel like gaming now is the best that gaming is ever going to look. Because how much more realistic could it possibly get, you know? So I think this is, like, the perfect time to bring all of these old games back for a modern sort of reimagining. Just because that means that all of the mainline games in the Persona series will have, like, the most updated look that they could possibly get. And while yes, graphics will probably enhance- holy crap! <laughs> while graphics probably will enhance as, you know, time continues on, I don't think there will ever be a point where we're like, oh, Persona 3 Reload looks so outdated nowadays. Like, like I feel like games made nowadays are gonna be like, the modern standard for a long, long time after this. Anyways, going back to what I was talking about before with... Uh, what was it? Improvements being made in videos. I mentioned before that I wasn't really adding enough stuff to these videos in terms of commentary. And so I do want to start talking a lot more in videos and just adding stuff and pointing out other things. Because one thing that I did notice in editing is that sometimes things do start to get a bit, like, formulaic and boring. Because we are mostly doing, like, the same kind of stuff each day. 
you know, hanging out with a friend, going back, back to the dorm, talking with people, and then going out and hanging out, and then going out and increasing our social stats. So to keep it from getting formulaic, I'm going to start talking a lot more. And so I might stop at some points and just so I can add a bit more to the conversation, just so that I can add a bit more to the videos. But I feel like it'd be better for me to, you know, like stop at points and talk for a bit longer than to just, than it would be to, to what I've been doing previously. All right, Yukari died during that battle, so we won't be going in with everyone's theurgy gauge ma gauge maxed, but I'm fine with it. I think I still think we're going to absolutely destroy this next boss, so let's get into it. I'm very confident with this next boss fight, so let's just run in there. Enemy is strong. Make sure you're ready before fighting. Let's go. All right, let's Are you ready? We're forcing our way through. All right, so first of all, we're going to have um, Fuka use her Theurgy. Give them my strength. Now. So in this boss fight, we're going to kind of get to just show off all of the Theurgy animations. Mitsuru's is Blizzard Edge. Uh, deal a bunch of ice damage to one foe without having to worry about resistances. No mercy! Child's play. That did a good amount of damage. Okay, Makoto's is less useful at the moment because it restores HP and increases stats. So we're going to wait a bit for him to use his. So the tower here is weak to dark skills. And the enslaved cupids are weak to electricity. So if we use Mazio, everything should be good. There's a the enemy reflected my attack there, but since we blocked that, no harm done. And we're almost done with this boss fight already. Yukari, you can just physical. And then, I don't want to waste Akiko's Theurgy, so... We'll just have you physical as well. And that's the boss fight done! We absolutely destroyed that! And we didn't even use the everyone's Theurgy. I can't let my guard down, especially not around those gatekeepers. I've never seen you with your guard down, though. Not even in the dorm. When we're up late on a mission, I've never even seen you yawn, much less doze off. Then the next day, you're all dressed up and drinking black tea before heading to school 15 minutes later. Uh, I should follow her lead. No. Once it becomes a habit, it's all second nature. Besides, wouldn't you find it offensive if I were to take it easy? After all, I'm the one asking you to attempt the impossible when taking part in these club activities. Huh? Asking us, huh? What's the matter? Oh, um, nothing. Come on, leader. We've beaten them, so let's move on. Hurry, clock's ticking. Boxing shoes. Gee, I wonder who this is gonna go to. You think this armor would suit me well? Mind if I use it? So yeah, we're back to our same old grind. Going up Tartarus, fighting bosses, getting new, cool new stuff. Hopefully this time we'll be able to make a bit more money, because our last couple of Tartarus expeditions, we pretty much got nothing from. I'm gonna focus more on money uh, in shuffle time, because we'll be getting most of our XP from Guardians since we won't really need to worry about bosses with our new Theurgy attacks. One sort of pet peeve that I have on the internet is some people on the internet will see one opinion about a movie or a game or something like that, and then some amount of time later, like maybe years later, or maybe even months later, they'll see a different opinion on the thing, and suddenly they'll be like, why did the public opinion on this change so much? Or they'll be like, you all switched up on this so... You all, like, changed your opinion on this so fast, like, what's going on? It's like, uh, one thing that I guess a lot of people on the internet don't recognize, you will never, ever get to see the majority's opinion on stuff, because you'll never get to see the ma a majority of people. What should I do? 
Because, like, even if you heard a billion opinions on the same thing, that's still not even close to the majority of people, right? So it's not that the sa these people... It's not like you're seeing the same ten people um, who ch all suddenly change their opinion. You're just seeing ten new people who have a different opinion from the previous people. It's, it's very weird that... A lot of people are just just don't really understand that, I guess. Another pet peeve I have with people talking on the internet is whenever someone says that they like something and then another person who doesn't like that thing comes in and says, you need to stop pretending that this thing is good. Nobody's pretending. Why would anyone pretend? What purpose would that serve? People just like a thing that you don't. But I guess the internet is kind of just people starting fights and getting upset over the most pointless and basic stuff. Not not like I'm trying to sound all high and mighty and stuff like that. I just feel like it's very weird to be like, oh, you need to stop, like, fooling yourself or something like that. Like, if they like the thing, what's the point? Like... Who cares? If someone likes a thing, that will never, ever impact anything related to you. Someone, like... Someone enjoying, like... A different Spider-Man movie than you, or something like that. Just... It doesn't matter. It will never matter. Spider-Man, like, discourse is one of the major examples of this that I've seen. Is a lot of people being like... Once Spider-Man No Way Home started coming out, a lot of people were like, you know, I actually really like these movies. And then, of course, there were some people who were like, why'd you... There are some people who were like, you need to stop pretending this is good. <laughs> and it gets... A lot of issues I have with the internet all, so, all like tie in to the same opinion, the same problems I've had with... The same problem I have with the opinion that I've talked about for years now. Or at least, probably at least a year. That, like, subjectivity and objectivity are completely separate things. Oh, a uh, new thing that we're going to get into right now. But my point is, stop caring about people's opinions if it doesn't hurt anybody. That's my entire point that I'm getting to. If someone likes a thing you don't like, who cares? It only matters when, like, you know... Like, if someone says that, like, they don't like a minority or something like that, that's a problem, obviously, because, you know, they're being super, like, either, like, xenophobic or homophobic or racist or whatever. And that's obviously bad, because, you know, minorities have had to go through a lot of stuff. But, like, that's, like, on an entirely, like, different level of, like, movie opinions and stuff like that. Anyways, Fuku's talking about how, um, it would about how something we should do right here is have characters scout ahead. We'll go ahead and ask her what this means. One person will split from the party to scout the floor. Exploring would be more efficient if we divide and conquer. Going solo makes it easier to evade shadows as well. And if the scout can locate the stairs, it'd make everyone's lives a lot easier. So what do you think? Should we ask someone to scout ahead? Hey. I'm on it. Just let me handle this. I'm counting on you. For some reason, I've seen a couple, like, LPs of this game, and... A lot of people just like are like no why would I ever use scouting but scouting is something that I used constantly during my personal playthrough because it fills out the entire map of the floor you're on and so you could just teleport to the next floor if you want and part of the next floor will be scouted out and you'll get a bunch of cool items I feel like oh missing person I feel like a lot of people don't really like that because from what I've seen on the internet a lot of people really have trouble with evading shadows not to say I'm a master at running away from them because as you've probably seen I do have issues with trying to evade them but I'd say I'm pretty decent at just like guessing where they're gonna go and not going that way but yeah these exclamation marks means that there's a missing person over there ah uh, <sighs> Must be the one person who went missing. We need to provide treatment immediately. Please return to the entrance as soon as you can. Yes. So yeah, you're taken back to the entrance. 
and then you're able to immediately go back. So yeah, you save a person, you will get a reward later, and of course it gives you a short break, so you instantly get teleported uh, back to the ground floor. Who knew you could play? I keep accidentally cutting off all of the uh, dialogue stuff here. It sucks that whenever you open up a chest or fight an enemy, like, they completely stop the dialogue that's going on and never, like... Like, I get, like, cutting it off because you're going into a cutscene or a battle or something like that, but they never resume it after you've done the thing, so you just never get a follow-up on that conversation. I've started to stop, like, looking down on other, like, fandoms of games and shows and stuff like that, because that is admittedly, unfortunately, something that I used to do, like, if a fan base was, uh, like, too cringy or whatever. But now, like, as someone who has played a lot more games and been a fan of a lot more things and has had experience firsthand with the fans of those things you like being absolutely horrendous, I've started to lighten up. And it ultimately comes back to what I was talking about earlier about, like, who cares what other people think? Like, if other people like it, um, if you want to have a better time on the internet, just stop, like, if someone is a fan of something, and again, it doesn't hurt anyone, who cares? Who cares is, some, is a phrase that I've been using, like, in my head a lot more often whenever I see, um, something on the internet, because, again, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody, like, why should I care if something's cringy? An example that I think of, uh, and this is relevant since we're playing Persona, an example I think of whenever I think about, like, people looking down on other people for liking something, is that I've noticed there's kind of a hierarchy in the Persona slash Mag Megami Tensei fandom uh, for opinions on these games. And of course this isn't everyone, it's just like a subset of people that I've seen. But I've noticed that there are... I, One pattern that I do see appear quite a lot is that um, Mega Ten fans, like some Mega Ten fans, really dislike Persona, like the Persona games. And then some Persona fans are like really kind of elitist about Persona 1 and 2, and so they hate Persona 3 through 5 fans. And then Persona 3 through 5 fans are at the bottom of this like nerdy food chain. So they just like like sort of take out that anger on other fandoms. Like like one pathetic um fight that I've seen happen on the internet is like Persona fans and Danganronpa fans getting into fights about like which game series is better and like getting genuinely like upset at other people for liking one and like being genuinely like condescending and really mean towards people who like the other thing it's like you're both nerds you're both absolute dweebs so like it's very it, it is kind of funny to see like someone being like oh Danganronpa is so cringe and then they have like of Joker from Persona 5 profile, it's like, you're an absolute dweeb too. You can't even complain about, like, Danganronpa's fandom being super cringe because have you seen the Persona fan- like, have you seen the bad apples of the Persona fandom within the past decade? Like, whenever, like, something tragic happens in real life, there's always gonna be, like, a Persona fan who pops in that compares it to Persona 5. Like, the internet would be a lot less, like, annoying to traverse if, like, nerds stopped, like, fighting each other. Anyway, speaking of nerds, I'm gonna nerd out about something that I'm a pretty big fan of, although I've never really talked about, uh, in videos. I really like indie horror stuff. One of my- my favorite indie horror game of all time is a little game called Faith the Unholy Trinity, which is, like, an Atari-style horror game that also has, um, and it's like such a cool- and it's a game that I want to play on the channel. I don't want to say too much about it because spoilers and stuff like that. It's basically like like about a priest who, you know, unco uncovers a cult and has to deal with all the demons they're summoning and stuff like that. And he also has to deal with his own guilt because, you know, he 
let this teenage girl fall under the influence of the cult. And it's all a really fun story that I want to show on the channel someday. Starting with Persona 5, the series added this thing where characters will talk during the uh, menus, like during fights and also at shops. And I know it's probably something that some people like, but my brain is wired in a way that, like, it's very easily distracted. And so it can kind of be tough for me to go through these menus. So you'll probably notice that there will be a lot of cuts whenever I'm going through menus and stuff like that in this game. That's just because my brain has a hard time focusing. So the last time I Let's Played a game that was published by Sega, I talked about how I was a really big fan of video essays and stuff like that. Um, and it's been about a year since then. And so, my opinion on the matter has slightly changed. I do still think that video essays are pretty fun. But once everyone started doing them, once that just became, became like a normal like, a format that was utilized a lot more often. There's a lot of video essays that just aren't made, in my opinion, as a viewer, that well. And I don't mean to insult anyone, I'm not going to name any names, but there are a lot of video essays that I've seen that don't add too much to whatever topic they're covering. Where a lot of it is just recapping what happens with very little comedic value added and very little and not a lot of things have really been added to the original thing. Like if they make something talking about a show, it'll just be like recapping what happened in the show for like an hour or two and just not a lot else to it. Again, not calling anyone out. But yeah, there's just like a lot of, I don't really like this word, but there's a lot of filler in video essays where it's just like, you can tell that, where you get to a point where you can tell that the person making the video essay doesn't really have anything to say, but they still just want to cover everything. So they just explain what's happening in the plot for a while and the viewer doesn't really get anything out of it. And so, as time has passed, and now that I've been flooded with constant, like, hour-long video essays on stuff that happens, now I'm starting to once again long for shorter-formed content. Like, not to pat myself on the back, but sort of, like, shorter videos like what I make, where it's, um, right, you know, like, less than half an hour, and it can be sort of quickly, like, you could spend, like, 15-20 minutes watching something and get something out of it. Whereas sometimes with whereas with video essays, you know, you spend 15 to 20 minutes watching it and you're still only like in the very intro where things are still being set up and it's just... But anyways, I've completely forgot to mention we're now in the boss fight. <laughs> I assume this will go pretty much the same as how the last one went. You know, we spam all, all of our Theurgies, except for Makoto's, and we get through this pretty quickly. I forget if I mentioned this last time, but Takeba's Theurgy was, like, the first thing ever leaked about this game, when all of the leak when all of the leaks were happening. Because this game was, like, we all knew of this game's existence months before it was announced because, you know, a lot of leaks happened, unfortunately, and that always sucks. A lot of people have mentioned this, but I miss when, you know, things were a surprise when they were announced. Anyways, Gigas over here is weak to win, so just use that on him. Speaking of Gigas, uh, I've been thinking about Let's Playing Earthbound, uh, because I Let's Played Mother 1 a while back, and that was like one of my first good Let's Plays, I'll say. 
And I still do get some comments, uh, you know, years after I posted that, where people are like, Hey, I use this as a walkthrough whenever I'm going through the game. And I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. I'm actually, you know, doing what I came to YouTube to do, is make guides for people, showing off stuff, and also hopefully being entertaining along the way. So yeah, I've been thinking of Let's Playing Earthbound. Uh, it has been like a couple of years since I beat the game for the first time, and I want to actually go back and fully finish it again. Um, and then maybe I'll do Mother 3, and then maybe I'll do a Mother 3 Let's Play if I ever get around to uh, finishing that game, because from what I remember, I got to like Chapter 2, and then I stopped. A lot of people do say it's like a really good game, so I do want to hold out and get through as much of the game as I possibly can before I make a judgment on that game, of course. Gatekeeper eliminated. No, uh, no other shadow activity detected in the vicinity. Roger that. Seems like we'll be able to take a small breather here. You sure look happy today, Mitsuru. Let me guess, you had a lot of stress pent up from being stuck at support this whole time? Not that. Not at all. I was just thinking about how Yamagishi sounded so dependable. Huh? I do? The connection is stable, and you accurately predict the Shadow's locations, too. You're exactly what we need. Don't you think so, too, Yuki? She's a huge help. No. You're exaggerating. Right now, I'm just trying to keep up with everyone. But I'll do my best to meet your expectations. Now all the now that we're all rested, shall we keep going? Okay, I've got your back, so let's move out once everyone's ready. Things are starting to feel like they've they're passing by a bit more quickly. I mean I look over at the timer and I've been going for an hour and twenty. So maybe it's not actually going by faster, but I guess I'm just having a bit more fun with it this time. How good is this new sword? Oh yeah, that's awesome. Sweet. Probably won't have to buy new weapons from Makoto now. I'm probably going to start referring to everyone by their first names. I've kept up this sort of thing where I refer to some of them by their last names and some of them by their first names. But I played the original Persona 3 where they all went by their first names, and so that has kind of been burned into my head. So yeah, if I, if I remember to, I'll try to refer to them by... I'll try to refer to uh, Akihiko as Sonata. But I'll probably just end up defaulting back to their first names. Alright, I'm gonna complain about one more thing and then I'll go back to actually, you know, talking about things I like. Because even though I am pretty negative whenever whenever I'm going through Tartarus and just talk about stuff that I don't like, I still do want to have fun doing these, so... Uh, one phrase that I really don't like is it's not that deep because 90% of the time that I see it it's used when someone states one of like something incredibly basic like on TikTok I'll see a video of someone like saying something mean about like their friend or their partner and I'll see someone comment on the video and being like you know if I was this this poster's if I was the partner of the person who posted this video, I would feel kind of sad. And then someone will comment under that saying, it's not that deep. Is the concept... Which confuses me because the concept of not liking someone being mean to you is incredibly... Like... Sh like a very basic, shallow concept. And it's gotten to a point where so many people use... So many people just say it's not that just deep when they don't, when they can't come up with a response to something that's kind of lost all meaning. Um, because there are people out there who, like, are borderline conspiracy theorists or are actual conspiracy theorists who, like, take a basic fact and go into, like, explicit detail as to... Um, like, saying there's something, like, bigger going on behind this. And for that, I'm like, it makes sense to be like, it's not that deep. But people have started saying it's not that deep to, like, basic, like, common ideas. And that just kind of sucks. Anyways, let's actually talk about stuff that I like, because I've been ranting way too much in these videos. One thing that I consistently really like about the Persona series is its title screens. 
because they're always uh, super cool looking or super stylish. And if and if they're not at least like super stylish or something like that, they they make me feel nostalgic, which is weird because I only got into this franchise like two years ago. So it says something when you can make someone feel nostalgic about something that they didn't that they only just started experiencing. My favorite title screen is tied between the title screens for Persona 3 and Persona 3 Fess and the original Persona 4, like not Persona 4 Golden, the original Persona 4 where it's that hallway with the, with all of like the silhouettes of those people. And silhouettes is something that, uh, silhouettes are something that, pe that the Persona franchise uses a lot. Um, like with Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royals title screens, they also use silhouettes for the characters to make it look much more stylish and cool. But yeah, those are super cool, and the, like, music on the title screens is also incredible. Like, any time I go back and listen to the, uh, title screen themes for, um, Persona 3 Fess, I immediately, like, get super duper nostalgic. It is... It is, like, it's very simple, just like some light piano keys, but it, it is very effective in, like, setting a mood for the game. And so that when you come back to it later, you're just like, oh, remember when I played this game and it was tons of fun. Also something that's consistently really good in the Persona games is the opening... Like the title, like when you wait on the title screen for too long and it starts playing like a, f a fun little animation with music and stuff like that. For example, at the end of all of my videos here for Persona 3 Reload, I've been playing like a short clip of the opening cutscene. And I think just pretty much all of the Persona games have such catchy music for those animations and such cool looking animations as well. One of my favorite songs for an opening comes from the Persona 4 dancing game. Uh, go ahead and look it up. You could go ahead and look it up. I don't think it'll have any spoilers in it. Um, from my, to my knowledge for that for that game or for the original Persona 4. It's just such a good song. And of course, uh, Reload has one of my favorites. And then the original Persona 3 was pretty good. And then the original Persona 4 has such a good opening theme song. It is absolutely incredible one thing that always like i think about it and it's super and it's like weird when i think about it for a sec like it makes sense in my head but like it's weird to think about is technically um the japanese voices for these characters are the canonical voices and you know the voices that we hear are obviously just dubbing over it and it's so like Whenever I think about that, my brain, like, stops for a sec. Because it's just, like, these characters and... Because these voices for the characters are so ingrained in my head of, like, yeah, that's what, you know, that's what Mitsuru sounds like, that's what Junpei sounds like, and all these different characters. It's like, huh, their voices are technically not that. One thing that I recently noticed that this isn't really a complaint, it's more of just like a, huh, that's weird that they add that is recently for the notes application on PCs, they added spell check to it. Like whenever you misspell a word or you say a word that's not in the in the application's vocabulary, it adds a little red squiggly under it, kind of like with uh, Microsoft Word and stuff like that. And it's like, it's not too much of an inconvenience because I can just right click on it and then say disable spell check and then it's fine. But it's just like a, huh, they never really added that before. It's kind of weird that they're adding that now. Oh, we're gonna actually get to something new with Fuka. Large group of en enemies ahead. Even if you took a detour, it's unlikely you'd be able to avoid them entirely. We'll be fine, we have Fuka. Um, I appreciate your confidence in me, but I mostly just locate enemies. Actually, I might be able to help out here. I'm going to use my jamming skill. So, she has jamming, which completely hides you from enemies. Uh, this only works for one floor. Help me, Lucia. 
you get this cool, like, weird effect around your screen, and enemies just won't be able to see you, so just walk past them. Yeah, these guys, these guys are all way too strong, so we're just gonna avoid them entirely. I always see people on the internet gravitate towards specific characters that I never really enjoy, because one phrase that I hear a lot is, they're so interesting. Interesting is a word that I've heard a lot to, des to describe characters, and that's just not really like a mindset that I go into with characters. For me, my brain works differently where if you want me to like a character, they need to either really be A, really nice and fun to be around and charming, or B, be a really cool villain. And usually these interesting quote-unquote characters fall into neither of those two camps because it's usually just when I see interesting character it's just the character is a prick but they have a reason for it and they have somewhat of a conscience so they don't really do anything cool as a villain but they're still a huge prick so they're not they don't fall into the nice category either but that's just how I view characters. A lot of people I see on the internet view characters as like a science experiment. Whereas I try to view characters as more like people. And I'm not trying to be elitist when I phrase it that way. It's just that that's the best way I know how to phrase it. Border floor, nine floors from here. Okay, yeah, this is the last uh, boss that we have to go through. Then we end off on floor 69. Nice. Ooh, also we get a new Theurgy here. Uh, because we've been... Uh, I guess since we've been filling up our compendium, we get the Jack Brothers Theurgy. Which is really, really awesome. Medium almighty damage to all foes and a high chance of inflicting down. That is insanely good. I am so glad that we got that. Got Mitra as a new persona. We also got Take Minakata. We got Zionga, or Zionga, something like that. Uh, which we'll go ahead and have replace Zio, because it's just better Zio. We've also got Mokoi. We also have Peak Pisaka, which has one of my favorite designs for a persona in the entire series. And we've got Leonan Sidhe. Apologies for my mispronunciation there. There's no way I pronounced that correctly. And that's gonna be about it. We got some pretty good personas out of this. Alrighty, back to floor 60. Still, we've been in here for two hours and we still have quite a bit of, quite a bit of time left, so... All right. So it's good to see that we're still, uh getting through all this in a reasonable pace. I'm glad it's not taking, like... I, I'm ready. I, I know for a fact we're never going to get to a point where we go on for like five hours or something like that. That would absolutely suck. Now. All right. Lizard Edge from Mitsuru. Right, that's not too bad. And he's frozen. Very nice. Fortunately, Akihiko doesn't have his Theurgy ready, so he's just gonna use Tarunda. Lower the attack of our foe there. Yukari, on the other hand, has Cyclone Arrow, so... Thank you. Cyclone Arrow does so much good damage there. It is such a good move for this early in the game. All right, let's see what Jack Brothers does. It's a fair chunk of damage. I absolutely love that animation. The aforementioned Jack Brothers being like a funny comedy duo is Incredible. Whoever thought of that back in the day, absolute genius. I'll take care of this. 
I'm gonna have Sonata use this again because I want to make sure that we get the Theurgy. Oh, come on! I really thought I was gonna get the Theurgy for that. Get everyone back to full health, although they didn't lose that much. Still good to have them there. I'll throw out Mitra because he's just my highest level persona. So I think technically he'll do the most damage. Battles have just kind of become us trying to raise up our Theurgy as quickly as possible. Alright, Aki goes Theurgy. His Theurgy is also so cool. Punching a ball of electricity is so awesome. In this situation. Have we even seen this thing attack yet? It du it's dead. Okay. Theurgies are so overpowered. I love them, but they might need to do a bit of balancing when they inevitably add them to Persona 6. Looks like I'm getting even stronger. Good. This will make me more effective in battle. Yes. Hey, nice work out there, Yukikun. You're seriously leader material. Want to give it a try? Who, me? Uh, yeah, no thanks. I'd be in way over my head. Unlike you, I just drop the ball when push comes to shove. I lose my cool way too easily. Anyway, should we get going? After you, leader. All I got from that conversation is, I, th is that Yukari thinks I'm cool. One tiny thing that's uh, different about uh, Persona 3 and Persona 3 Reload is that- Oh, new tuxedo. I believe this is for Sonata. Hell yeah. Looking pretty good. He's got glasses which make him look like a total dork, but I like the look. Alright, now I'm just gonna kinda speed through these floors since, you know, we don't really have any bosses upcoming. So the portraits uh, in this game... Oh my goodness, this floor is huge and I imagine mapping it on its entirety would be a lot of work. Regio Senpai. There's a Reaper that appears in Tartarus. Ooh, a Reaper. Apparently it'll appear out of nowhere and chase you endlessly, and if you get caught, um, I think you know what is supposed to happen if a Reaper catches you. Maybe it's trying to get rid of us since we're outsiders in Tartarus? So yeah, the Reaper is a running, like, sort of character throughout the Persona series, where if you stay on a floor too long, it will start to chase after you. You will not be able to defeat it until much later in the game. I have heard stories of people who have, like, somehow, like, defeated the Reaper pretty early on, and they... And they've gotten... They got so much XP that they got, like, pretty close to level 99, like, much earlier than was intended. But yeah, if you notice the Reaper coming, run immediately. But yeah, the portraits in this game are uh, a lot closer to um, Persona 5 in that they're so up close and personal, whereas the previous... Whereas in the original Persona 3, um, the, the portraits were a lot more like the rest of the series, where they're a bit more further back, and that allowed for them to be a bit more expressive, because you could see like their entire upper body, and so they can be put in a lot of different poses that make them a lot more expressive and fun. And there are a lot of funny sprites from the original Persona 3 that it kind of sucks that we don't get uh, that we don't get in this version of the game. For example, Fuka had a funny sprite where she was like cross-eyed sort of. Yes. And it was very adorable and Yukari had this face uh, that she would make sometimes where she, when she was like really done with Junpei's crap, she'd just be like ugh, like what is wrong with you? And it was very funny. It was only like rarely used, but it was great. And there are quite a few sprites that like it sucks that they're gone, but ultimately I enjoy playing Reload a lot more than I did the original versions of Persona 3, so you take what you can get. So the funny thing is, uh, previously, the previous two times that we've gone to Tartarus, or technically three, 
I was like, oh, I keep forgetting to go to Etagawa. I'll be sure to go to him next time, because if you go to him directly after leaving Tartarus, he gives you something. Thing is, though, that thing is um, an increase in your courage stat. And obviously, we've already maxed out our courage stat, so technically we'll never get to see Edogawa giving us uh, the courage boost. So the one time he's useful in the game, we don't get to see it this Let's Play. I really like how Akihiko's new outfit has been added uh, for the silhouette here in the Persona menu. It's a fun little detail there. The floor after this is a border floor. It seems like the coast is clear for now, so you'll get a bit of a break. Very nice, so... We get the teleporter on floor 68, and of course, we meet our border floor. An unknown enemy. Staying calm ensures the quickest path to victory. On floor number 69. This is... Old document three. A new institution will launch on the island. The amount of money being poured into it is unheard of. I've been told to be part of this. I'm worried. I have a bad feeling about this project. So we get to learn a bit more about this project that was seemingly happen happening on Tatsumi Port Island. We still have no idea what this project is, so I guess we'll just have to continue going through Tartarus to figure that out. Of course, now that we have the old document, we could go ahead and report that to Elizabeth and get a few other um, side quests as well. 30,000 yen? Nice. I don't think we're ever going to have a million yen at any point in the game, just because in this game money is a lot more sparse. Uh, once we get to Persona 4 and especially Persona 5, then definitely we'll be making a lot more money there. But when it comes to this game, I don't think we're going to get there. But anyways, we climbed up all of Tartarus, so... Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're, gonna, we're just going to be waiting out our final days until we get to the full moon. And thankfully, we have an entire month to wait until the next Tartarus expedition. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much, so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.